Good morning, uh, Year 8. It's Mr. Sutton here, and I'm going to be talking to you about food and packaging waste. Uh, you can see that on this PowerPoint here. It's quite an area of concern, really. Um, personally, I find it quite worrying, the amount of packaging that is around. And I've been quite sad to see that with people going back to fast food places, we see a lot of it appearing. Um, people dumping things. I live in the countryside and I know that even just here in the village, not far away, there's been people that seem to think it's perfectly fine uh, with everything that's going on, that they just dump all their rubbish on the ground. Now, I'm hoping that you, like me, don't think that's a good idea. But one of the things we're going to be looking at today is a bit more into about food and packaging waste because there's no two ways about it. We live in a society where we waste a hell of a lot of plastic um, on packaging food when most of the time we don't need to. Now, I've gone this one. We've got this, for example, this slide here. And as I put at the top, in today's society, food packaging is a big business and they make a hell of a lot of money um, about wrapping up and packaging things. For example, we've got down on here, you've just got these apples which have been packaged in this PET or polyethylene um, Tetra Pak or vacuum formed pack. Just about every item of food that we purchase from our supermarkets comes in some form of packaging, usually made from a variety of plastics. And that's very, very true indeed, because not every single bit of packaging is equal. Not every single bit of plastic is actually the same. They're all slightly different. And as I put here, organically packaged items. An apple has been designed by nature to have its own packaging. It's peel around the outside, and most fruits do. It's perfectly formed, a bit like an egg if you imagine. It doesn't need anything else around it. But yet, of course, supermarkets like to put packaging around it. A, to protect it, but also in many ways to allow us to advertise it you know, to us. So that they can, even if it's just a plastic bag, they can put some sort of branding on it to help us or to help them to sell more of that particular product. There's some facts on here as well. And I think some of these are quite surprising and quite shocking. I know doing the research for it, I found it very, very worrying indeed. One million plastic bottles are sold every single minute. Just think about that. Every single minute. So in the time it's uh, this video has been going, at least a million new bottles have been sold. And every single year, the amount of waste plastic would circle the earth four times. Not just once, four times. That's an immense amount of plastic. And plastic outnumbers sea life in the sea six to one. So if you take all the sea life in the sea and you think about that, there's more plastic. So there's more plastic in the sea than there is sea life. And all sea turtles, and I thought this was really shocking, have some form of plastic waste in their bodies. So this poor guy that we can see at the bottom here, he will have some sort of plastic that he swallowed thinking because it's brightly coloured that it's some sort of food and so they just swallow it and of course then it can go in they can feel um, as though they're full when actually they're not and then eventually starve to death and 50% of all plastic is used only once and in fact in the UK a third of UK plastic is not recycled that means two thirds of it ends up in what we would call landfill or worse going into the sea so plastic is a really really big problem and today I'd like you to well educate you a bit more about what plastic packaging actually means. We've got this, which looks a bit technical, but most plastic is actually recyclable, but plastic is the name that we give to a whole range of different types of materials. When I say that I have got a plastic can or a plastic laptop case, or my chair has got plastic in it, those are different types of plastics and each one of them has different characteristics. Now you can see in the chart opposite in here we have these and it's quite strange seven different SPI codes that basically relate to different types of plastics. Don't ask me why they decided to in effect get to seven and just stick everything else in there. It's a bit of a weird one but the first six are all recyclable and then other plastics are seven and usually these are the plastics that are not as easily recycled so the first six can be easily recycled and the other ones that don't fall into that bracket or don't have any of those symbols on are not as easily recycled they can still be recycled but most of the time they're not 
And these symbols that you can see here, these little triangles with the arrows, which say that they can be recycled, symbolizes the fact that they can go round and round and round, be used again and again. Uh, and these numbers in there, and sometimes the lettering underneath, tells you exactly what type of thing it is. Now, we've got here the different ones. We've got, first of all, we've got PETE, -E, uh, which is usually what you have for most drinking cartons. Uh, so it's usually a tough, plastic and it's used because it's got really good properties for being cold so anything that goes into the fridge is really useful uh, when it's cold it doesn't become brittle we've got HDPE which is um, quite good for your milk cartons as well um, you've got PVC I don't know why it only says V there I might have to check that one but it's a PVC or um, hard rigid plastic plastic often used for when you've got your sort of cleaning products LDPE which is a similar to HDPE but it's LDPE now HDPE and LDPE are pretty much the same type of plastic but LDPE or low density polyethylene instead of high density polyethylene is squeezy. Basically, you can get hold of it and squeeze it. So, if you think about your toothpaste tube, back in the day they used to be made out of aluminium. These days they're made out of LDPE, just like sauce bottles like this. And it's usually used so that you can squeeze something and it doesn't distort and it goes back in shape and it doesn't crack and break up. We have number five, which is polypropylene which is a hard but flexible plastic and is used in microwaves and stuff like that often the trays you get if you get a microwave meal the black sort of trays they're often polypropylene um, yogurt containers ice cream containers you name it and then finally we've got just before the number seven we've got polystyrene or number six you may know polystyrene from those little beads that you can get polystyrene or expanded polystyrene same stuff but it's often used in a hard, rigid form without it being blown up like popcorn. And it's used in different types of containers. And then we've got seven. Now, you don't usually see the seven one. Usually, they just don't bother putting anything on them because it's an other. And this can be the acrylic. So stuff that we have made maybe in year, year seven when you made your little phone stands. The acrylic, that comes under number seven. Nylon, which, of course, a lot of clothes are made out of. That's in number seven and they're often used so you can see here those large drinking things or sunglasses and other bits and pieces are made out of these types of plastics now what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to do this particular task here which is to go and have a look at some of the stuff that you've got at home maybe not necessarily in your bin but maybe stuff that you're just using and you have a look at while you're you know while you're looking at this video Maybe stuff that you haven't opened up yet. I mean, I had a look last night and yes, I was one of those people that actually went and queued up the KFC <laughs> to get one of those um, yesterday. And this was quite an interesting one because it has changed over time. Now, originally this would have been, this bit at the bottom is actually made out of cardboard. Usually this has got a coating over it because you can't take just plain old cardboard and put water in it or any kind of liquid because well it'll just go all soggy so they tend to coat this with a bit of plastic which means that this paper often isn't as easy to recycle as you think previously though back in the day it might have been expanded polystyrene you've got your straw which used to be made out of plastic and is now thank god actually made out of paper obviously that also means it becomes a little bit soggy and we have as well the lid on here. Now the lid is still plastic. And if I look at this one, it's got a symbol and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. And it has the little symbol just there and it's got a six. And then underneath it, it's got PS for polystyrene. So that one is a polystyrene top. Now if I was gonna have a look at these, yes. Straw can be recycled, maybe recycled because it's cardboard, so they're made both made out of paper, and this can be recycled. But it is important that when you actually recycle them, you take them apart, you clean them out, and you take them apart, because the paper is very recyclable, so is the polystyrene, but if they're mixed up, if they're together, 
not as recyclable and they don't like to actually have to recycle them by taking them apart. Um, I've got a yogurt container as well, big yogurt container. This one, it's got top and bottom are made out of the same material. And if I look on it, I can see on the bottom, this one, and you're not gonna be able to see this, it has got a PP on there for polypropylene and the number five as well. So this particular one has got it on the bottom of there that says polypropylene. Now the lid itself doesn't, oh no it does. It also has the symbol on as well for polypropylene because if this was to get taken away or lost or separated from the main base, you'd still know that that was recyclable as polypropylene. So those can be recycled. So they can go into my recycling bin. And in fact, they will go back into my recycling ready to go off um, tomorrow, in fact, when the recycling goes out. Now, what I'd like you to do, and this is the task, we've got this one. Obviously, you're watching this video, but I'd like you to get a little bit more knowledge on this. And I've got a whole range of different bits and pieces. I've got this one. I'll include the links in this, but I've got a whole range of these videos, 15 individual ones. Don't worry, I'm not going to expect you to watch all 15. The top two. First of all, the life of a, a plastic bottle. This one's quite a nice, jolly one. Is actually sponsored by Pepsi. So they have got a little bit, they want it to be all good. And it talks about how plastic bottles can be recycled. But that's very upbeat and very positive. The problem is that most plastic bottles aren't recycled. And that's why I'd like you to really watch this one what really happens to the plastic that you throw away. So watch the life of the plastic bottle first. That's all the shiny, happy corporate Pepsi people telling you how wonderful plastic bottles are and how they can be reused time and time again. And then I'd like you to watch the life cycle of the plastic bottle. You are more than welcome to have a look at some of the others and I will include the link to the general playlist as well so that if you want to extend some of your knowledge about this and what plastic's all about, you can do, but that's completely up to you. And I'd like you to watch those and then I'd like you to fill out the student version. Now the student version of the PowerPoint asks you to do this slide here and I've put an example in already. It's got complete the table opposite with observations on three bits of food packaging from your own home. Don't go rummaging around in the bin. I don't want you cutting yourself on cans or getting covered in horrible food waste. What I want you to do is be sensible about this and try and find examples Maybe even just go on the internet. But if you can find examples that are real life ones, all the better. Because I need you to do a little bit of testing. I want you to look for the SPI codes. So just like I've done, see if you can find little triangle bits and find out what type of plastic they're made out of. I'd like a description or image. You can just write in here. I've got this one, which is a little packaging thing for a sandwich. And uh, go ahead, film over the front there. I know that it's got the PET symbol on it. So it's number one for PET and it's also got this film on the front which I don't know what that was but it obviously wasn't PET. Observations. Now this is where you've got to get it out and have a go with it. So something like this which we said is polystyrene is quite squishy but of course if I break it too much it goes a bit white. I don't know if you can see that but it starts to white and it, it, it can be a little bit, it can tear, can be a bit more brittle but polystyrene is relatively impact resistant. So it crunches, makes a sort of crunchy noise. It's fairly hard. I want you to really think about that one. Whereas we've got this polypropylene, which is a lot more squishy. Uh, it does bounce back, but it feels as not as crinkly. It's not as, it doesn't feel like it's gonna have, if I drop that, it'll be really impact resistant. Maybe you can find a type of plastic that doesn't feel as squishy as this. Maybe it's a bit harder than this one in your sort of packaging. Polystyrene microwave tins, for example. And then I also want you to think about, is it actually recyclable? Well, something like this definitely is. Both parts are, but my sandwich one, I've put, yes, but the top film has to be removed. Because just like this, if I put that into recycling like that, they don't like that because that's a mixture of two different materials. And even worse, if you've got something like a microwave meal where it's got a polypropylene or polystyrene dish and then a film over the top, it's very, very difficult to recycle because that's a mixture of two plastics. I want you to do with that with three examples and then you can come on to this one. The second video talks about what they're called plastic gyres. 
which is a bit of a weird world, uh, word. What that is, as you will find out, is areas of the ocean, and before I watched these, I didn't realise they existed, where loads and loads of plastic like this type of stuff just ends up coming together in these massive, great big areas that are just covered in plastic pollution. And you can see a boat trying to go through that. It literally cuts off all of the surface of the water. And what I'd like you to do is be creative, and I'd like you to point out where they are on the map here. So you fill out your own ones. Use a little symbol. It's up to you. Maybe you could find a little Gaia symbol that you're going to put on. And I'd like to know which is the largest one, which is the biggest of these. Can you find any more information out about them? So those are the two things. Filling that out. Filling that out. Fairly straightforward. And hopefully the video will give you a little bit more of appreciation about how important it is to do as much recycling. And make sure that if it is recyclable... You put it and make sure everybody else in your house will put it in for recycling and make sure that they separate up those plastics from papers and so they go into the bin separately. So when they get to a recycling centre, that can be recycled and so can that. Thanks, everyone. I hope that's been interesting for you. As I say, if you've got any questions, then please message me. Uh, and by all means, have a look at those other ones on what is a really interesting topic. Have a fantastic rest of the day and the weekend. And I'll speak to you and see you next week. Take care. Goodbye.